Hello, geometry. Um, welcome to lesson six. Good news is a lot of people think this is much easier than uh, the last two lessons that we've done. So a couple new theorems that happen in triangles. Um, they're right there, side splitter and angle bisector theorems. Um, but first thing we're going to do is going to do a review problem. Okay, and it's going to tie into the side splitter. Um, set up a proportion and solve for the variable. I'm telling you that the horizontal lines are parallel. All right. Now that's important because we have to first say the triangles are similar. Well, I know, well, before I do anything, angle M is congruent to itself, right? It's in both triangles, it's congruent to itself. I also know that angle MPS is congruent to angle Q because of corresponding angles postulate. And I could actually say the same thing here. MSP is congruent to angle R because of corresponding angles postulate. So why are the triangles similar? Because of angle-angle similarity. It is not side-angle-side similarity because I don't know X, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and redraw these. And then MQR. And we've got MP is X, MS is 12, MR is 18, 12 plus 6, MQ is X plus 7.5. Okay. Um, and we know angle M is congruent to angle M. And we know angle P is congruent to angle Q. That's all we really need. That's angle angle similarity. But we also know angle S is congruent to angle R. Okay. But which proportion do we set up here? Well, X matches up with X plus 7.5. And that's equal to 12 over 18. And then we can solve that. So 18X equals 12 X plus 7.5. So I get 18x equals 12x. Plus 12 times 7.5, I believe, is 90. Yep. Subtract the 12x, I get 6x equals 90, and x equals 15. Okay. You could have done that problem back in unit, or sorry, lesson three. All right. Now, I'm going to show you a shortcut. The theorem below allows you to set up a, a, a proportion in a much easier way. The side splitter theorem works in all triangles. But certain conditions have to occur. So here's what the theorem says. If a line is parallel to one side, of a triangle and intersects the other two sides. So basically it hits the other two sides. Then the line divides those two sides proportionally. So what can you do differently? So let's go back up to the picture above. I'm going to go ahead and clear this stuff. I told you that PS was parallel to QR. So that is part of the theorem. If a, if a line is parallel to, the, to one side, which it is, and that line that's parallel intersects the other two sides, which it does, it intersects at P and S, then the line divides those two sides. It divides MQ and MR Proportionally, so the the um, proportion you can get is x over seven point five equals twelve over six. Okay, essentially, what's happening here is you don't have to look. PQ is not the length of a side of a triangle, but we can still use it in this theorem. Okay, you want to know why? I can show you later. Ask me about it. So it was x over 7.5 equals 12 over 6. And if we solve that, 
I get 6x equals 12 times 7.5 is 90. Much easier. I get x equals 15. Did we get the same value? Yes, we did. Okay. Let's see if we can do it again. Set up and solve the proportion from this diagram. First thing I want to check for are the lines parallel. They are. Okay. So what I can do, it's very simple. X over 16. equals 5 over 10. Let's probably figure out what this one is just without, without really doing much, but we'll go ahead and do the cross multiplying. 10x equals 80 and x equals 8. All right. It's a nice theorem. Makes life a little easier for you. Okay. Why can the side splitter not be used in this triangle? We don't know if the lines are parallel. So are they parallel? If they are, then I can do it. If they're not, I can't. So I have to check for that first. Most people are just going to start setting up a proportion and not check for that. Make sure you're checking for that. Now I'm going to tell you, assume that the line to the middle is parallel to the third side. Now let's go ahead and do it. So what I'm going to have is x over x plus 2 equals 2x minus 1 over x plus 4. Cross multiply, and life's going to get a little tricky here. x times x plus 4 equals x plus 2 times 2x plus, minus 1. All right, so I've got to distribute the x. This side's not too bad. That's x squared plus 4x. But I've got a foil over here. x times 2x. I'm going to switch colors here and do it over here. So that's 2x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x plus 4x. And then the last ones will be 2 times negative 1 which is negative 2. Combine my middle terms, I get 2x squared. Negative x plus 4x is 3x minus 2. Okay, now I want to get this equal to 0, so I want to get my x squareds together first. Okay, and then I'm going to also subtract 4x and move it over as well. And so what I get is 0 equals 2x squared minus 1x squared is just 1x squared. 3x minus 4x is negative 1x minus 2. Now what? Well, think back to the very first lesson in this unit. We factored that. I want two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to negative 1. That would be negative 2 and positive 1. But I'm still not done. I got to set both of those equal to zero to get my x values. And I get x equals two and x equals negative one. Now, can I have x equal negative one? We'll take negative one and plug it back in for x. Right away, you see that this side becomes a negative. That's bad. You can't have a negative side. So that can't be an answer. My only answer here is 2. Put it in just to make sure. There's 2. There's 4. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1 is 3. 2 plus 4 is 6. 2 over 4 is a half. 3 over 6 is a half. It worked. Okay? Quadratics are not going away. I promise. There is a corollary to the side splitter theorem. and just says that if three or more parallel lines intersect a couple different transversals, then the segments intercepted on the transversals are proportional. This looks really confusing. It shouldn't be. It is just A over B equals C over D. It looks a lot like side splitter, just the lines are extended. It's not a closed polygon. Okay. It, yeah. 
Okay. The triangle angle bisector theorem says that an angle bisector, which is given by that symbol right there, that symbol is needed or those symbols are needed, which says those two angles are equal. The only way those two, two angles are equal is if SQ is an angle bisector. So we've got an angle bisector. Divides the opposite side So in this case, the opposite side would be the one that's opposite the congruent angles. So the opposite side here in this problem is RP. Okay. It divides the opposite side into two segments. So the two segments. RRQ. And PQ. into two segments that are proportional to the other two sides. So what I can say is RQ over PQ is equal to, well, RQ matches up with RS. It's on the same side of the angle bisector and PQ matches up with PS. Right. I've seen other people, I've seen other ways of writing that, but every other way of writing it follows the rules of proportions that I showed you in the first lesson. So there are multiple ways of doing this. But let's plug in RQ is five, PQ is eight, RS is six, and uh, PS is X. So five X equals forty eight. 9.6 for x. Okay, last question here. Find the lengths of JP and TP. So let's go ahead and mark those. JP and TP. Given that KS is 5. KS is 5. SQ is three, QT is four, and KJ is six. All right, so I've got parallel lines and I've also got an angle bisector. Angle JKR and angle SKR are congruent. So we've got an angle bisector and we've got a parallel lines here. So we've got side splitter and angle bisector in use. Um, I would say that the... Um, easiest one would probably be x. x is um, 6 over x equals 5 over 3. It's a side splitter, right? Parallel line cuts this and this, this and this. So uh, 5x equals 18. X equals 3.6. So that would be JP, 3.6. All right. Now the angle bisector is a little trickier because I have to do the full segment. Um, so it, the angle bisector is KT. That's this right here. I get rid of that again. Try that again. This is the angle bisector, which means it cuts... 4 and y proportionally. So 4 over y equals well, what side of the triangle is equal or on the same side as 4? That'd be those two together. So 8. And then on this side would be 6 and x. So 6 plus 3.6 is 9.6. And then you just multiply 8y equals 38.4. Divide by 8, and you get y, which is 4.8. And so that's the triangle angle bisector and side splitter theorems. Um, we've got one lesson left in this unit, and then we'll be done.